manufactured homes have been known to be the most affordable option for people these days. But there are a lot of concerns surrounding manufactured homes and so many concerns that like, I would never buy one. What? Sorry, I want to start off by saying I'm not throwing shade to anybody who lives in a manufactured home. I'm not looking down on anybody that owns one who's looking to buy one. I've had family members that lived in manufactured homes. Even to this day, I have a family member that lives in one. I think they're an affordable option and they're wonderful homes, but there are some things that have come up lately about them that are quite concerning. And the purpose of this video is to educate you, to tell you about things that you need to look for if you're going to be considering buying a manufactured home. I'm going to talk about the affordability. They're really not that affordable anymore. We're going to talk about the safety of them. And my dear friend, Christina Smallhorn, who knows a thing or two about manufactured homes because she dedicates her YouTube channel regarding housing affordability. She's going to talk to you about the latest issue with corporate investors snatching up these manufactured home communities and literally kicking people out of their homes. So this is a good one, guys. So let's get started. First, I want to just address the definition of manufactured home because they're also known as mobile homes and people still call them mobile homes to this day. The difference between a manufactured home and a mobile home is the date it was built. So manufactured homes that were built before 1976 were called mobile homes. Now they're called manufactured homes. However, they're still considered mobile because they have a trailer hitch on them and they have an axle that runs the length of the house, making it mobile but we use the term manufactured homes now. The first reason why I would never buy a manufactured home is the affordability. These are considered probably the most affordable option, but in a lot of cases these days, it's becoming expensive to own these homes. The first thing I want to address is obtaining a loan in order to buy a manufactured home. You can get a conventional VA or FHA loan when buying a manufactured home. However, that home has to be permanently fixed to the land that it's on, not sitting up on cinder blocks or, or raised off the ground. It has to be permanently affixed to the ground in order to obtain those types of loans. Now, if you're buying a manufactured home that is not permanently fixed to the land, you have to obtain what's called a chattel loan. A chattel loan is a loan to purchase movable personal properties, such as a manufactured home. Now, the problem with the chattel loan is your interest rates. It's going to be quite expensive if you're obtaining a chattel loan. Now, look at this website right here, chattelmortgage.net. Now, with a great credit score of 740, 20% down for a 25-year loan, the interest rate is 8.25%. Oh my gosh. A traditional mortgage today, you're looking at like high sixes, maybe around 7%, 8.25%. And that's with a great credit score. If you don't have a great credit score, that rate is probably going to be a little bit higher. So right there, it's kind of expensive to have a loan on a manufactured home. If you decide you're going to be buying a brand new manufactured home and you're dealing directly with the salespeople in the community that you're going to be buying, in, be wary of the sales tactics where they're going to be trying to push you to do their financing because typically that financing, the interest rates are going to be much higher. So this is another reason why I would never buy, or if I did, I would not be going through the salespeople at the manufactured home company. I know I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this, but you got to do your homework. And if you have to obtain a loan for this, you got to shop around. So there's that resource there, chattelmortgage.net. You can look there and you could talk to other banks to see if they do offer a chattel loan. They are hard to come by, but they are out there. So definitely I would do your research if you have to go this direction. And just a little fun fact here, back in 2015, billionaire Warren Buffett, who was the owner of Clayton Homes, Clayton Homes is the largest producer of manufactured homes in this country. They were busted for predatory lending practices. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. They were doing predatory lending practices, similar to what happened back in the great financial crisis, where they were giving loans to people who really didn't qualify for them. And therefore these poor people were foreclosed on and like pretty much left out on the street. Fortunately, that is not going on these days. If you're going to be dealing directly with the salespeople for these manufactured homes, be, just be wary of that because you just, one never knows. And again, I'm not accusing anybody of doing anything like that right now, but you just never know. Continuing on with the affordability. Another reason why I would not buy is the cost to insure a manufactured home. Now you've heard me talk about this. This has been a topic of discussion for the last couple of years about the rising homeowners insurance rates. And it's really hurting people's pocketbooks in this country right now. Homeowners insurance for a manufactured home is higher 
than if you owned a regular traditional single family home. In my research, I have found that insuring a manufactured home can run somebody anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000 a year. And that's depending on where you live and also dependent on the features of the home. Now, the reason the insurance is much higher for a manufactured home is because manufactured homes are less able to withstand natural disasters like hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, fires. They're more susceptible to wind damage. And manufactured homes tend to be a higher risk for theft and vandalism. That's one I was not aware of, that that's a reason why the insurance rates could be high, that reason of theft and vandalism. I was surprised by that one. So again, you're going to be paying a lot in homeowner's insurance owning a manufactured home. So that's just another reason. Yeah, no thanks. I just wanted to take a quick second to let you know that if you are in need of a real estate agent in your part of the country and you can't find one, click the link down below in the description box, fill out the form, and I will get back to you within 24 hours. I'm connected to tons of agents around this country, and I would be happy to help get you connected to one in your market. Another reason why I would never buy one, and we're still on the topic of affordability, is that you need to rent the land that the home sits upon. If you're living in a community, you have to pay a lot rent to the owner of that community. And in recent years, like say in the last year or two, the cost to leasing the land that these homes sit on, it, they're going up by a lot. Now, in most cases, these manufactured home communities or parks, they're also called manufactured home parks, typically on average, you would pay about a few hundred dollars a month. But in recent years, these Parks have been taken over by private equity firms, corporate entities. And what they're doing is they're, as soon as they take them over, they're raising the lot rents. For example, there's a community in Michigan. Residents there saw their lot rent increase by 57% to $700 a month. Now, there's a lot of people on fixed incomes that, you know, especially the elderly, that choose to live in these communities because it's affordable. Well, it's it's becoming not so affordable anymore. I even read that there are some communities in Florida that are now charging up to $1,000 a month for lot rent. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? This is ridiculous, it's so expensive. Now you're paying a mortgage, now you're paying a homeowner's insurance, and now you have that cost on top of it. Yeah, no thanks. Speaking of corporate investors, I'm going to turn this over to my friend, Christina Smallhorn, who's going to share with us what these corporate entities are doing now by snatching up these communities and literally kicking people out of their homes so they can just take them over and do what they want with that property. When it comes to manufactured homes in manufactured home parks today, there have been more and more corporate investors, those hedge funds, that are buying up as many manufactured home parks as possible. The thing is, is that not only are they buying them up, they're also evicting the people that live in those homes. People that have had their homes paid off for years. Corporate investors have not been friends to the people that have been residents of those mobile home parks, and they give zero you-know-whats about what happens to them after they lose their home. In some cases, some of these corporate investors are offering the people that own those homes a small sum to go ahead and move out of their manufactured home. The other thing to note about this is the corporate investor is not actually removing the mobile home. What they're doing is they're going ahead and giving like lipstick on a pig. They're revamping that whole entire manufactured home and they're renting it out again to the next buyer, but they're never going to buy them. They're only going to be used for rental properties. That's just one way that they're using these manufactured home parks. In a lot of other cases, they're buying up the park, promising members that they're going to go ahead and fix up the park. But of course, that's going to be at an expense. That expense has increased a lot of people's lot rents from $400 to $800. And I've even seen it go as high as $1,600. This is a big chunk of change when someone is looking for the most affordable housing option. And you have to remember, a lot of these people are elderly on fixed incomes, and many of them are low wage earners. The corporate investors know that there these people are squeezed. They know that they own the home and they don't care what happens to them in the long run, even if it makes them homeless. Jackie, I'll leave your audience with this. If you are considering living in a manufactured home park, I want you to look for one that's a co-op. That means that it's a cooperative, much like a condo association, where every member of the park has a stake in the park, and that will levelize your payments that you have to pay for your lot rents. It creates a community within the park, and you're going to be a lot less likely of having corporate investors come in and scoop up your home. That just absolutely blows my mind. Like, I had no idea that that's been going on recently with 
with these investors taking over these communities. That is just sad. Another reason why I would never buy a manufactured home, let's talk about the safety. The Department of Housing and Urban Development has stepped in. They have updated the regulations and codes to these manufactured homes, but you still have to be careful. If you're buying an older one, those codes may not be up to current standards. Now, another thing with safety, they are vulnerable to natural disasters and even high winds. So if you're in an area that's prone to hurricanes, tornadoes, yeah, no, thank you. I don't need to be stressing out about that. I don't want to be having to deal with, you know, worrying about the house blowing away, you know, and just in general, the safety standards on a manufactured home are different from a traditional home. Got to be careful with that because again, safety is going to be a big concern when you're owning a manufactured home. If you live in a manufactured home community right now, please share in the comments. I'd love to hear what your experience has been, especially if you're seeing any increase in the lot rents. With those increases, are you seeing an improvement in the amenities or in the community? Are they doing things to make any updates to the communities? That's what I'm really curious about. So if you have any info on that, drop that comment below. Do you want to know what are the types of homes you should never consider buying? Well, I got a video right here. It's pretty awesome. I think you need to check it out. Thank you so much for watching me today to get your dose of real estate reality. My name is Jackie Baker, and I will see you next time.